sewists, Catherine here from Minerva, and today we are going to stitch up the B Charl jacket from Style Arc. Now, this is one of the kits that we have available for you to purchase. I will link down below the kit. Um, that being said, let's go through the materials that we are going to need to do this project. So to start, we are going to use this lovely knit fabric here. It's a cable knit. It's got a decent amount of stretch to it. We've got a printed paper pattern as well as ballpoint needles, matching thread, and these really fun Minerva Maker labels to put in. Okay, so we have all of the materials already, and my suggestion with any fabric is to launder it in the way in which you're going to launder your final garment. This is a lovely jacket cardigan that I want to be able to toss into the laundry and wash in my machine at home. So before I even cut anything out, I washed and dried this in my washer and dryer. And now we are just going to go ahead and prep our pattern. So the sizes for the style arc pattern are found on the website. I'll also show you a quick screenshot on these sizes here. In terms of the finished garment measurements, it doesn't actually show that for each of the sizes, but tells you for a standard size and then looks at those grade increments. So you just have to do a little bit of math to get that final size. This is an oversized jacket, so don't be afraid to go um, either your size that your measurements fall into, or even if you want it to be a little bit more oversized and cozy, you could even go up a size for that nice coziness. I actually went up a size on this one and love it. Um, because I went up a size, it's a little bit longer than it probably would be. It'd probably be maybe an inch or so uh, shorter if I went true to my size, but it is extra big and cozy. So the part you've all been waiting for, stitching it up. Let's get to that tutorial. So first we are going to talk about the preparation. So I always like to trace out my patterns and keep my original printed patterns. If it's a PDF pattern that I am printing out, I will cut into those because I can reprint them. But if I ever want to make this in a different size, I like to trace it out. And one of the important things to mention is to transfer your dogs or your degree of greatest stretch, because that is not always the same as the grain line. So step one is the neck band. So with this, we have two pieces for our neckband and we are going to create the seam in the center back of that neckband. So with right sides together, we are going to clip them in place. I like to use clips over pins just because it holds this thicker fabric a bit better. Then we're going to stitch them, fill up your bobbin with your matching thread here. Our seam allowance for this is three sixteenths of an inch. That's pretty tight. Uh, with that, it is optimized for use with a serger. You do not need a serger to stitch this up. And in most instances, I stitched it regularly prior to doing the serger, just because then it helps prevent any shifting with this thicker fabric. Next, go ahead and press using a decent amount of steam, the seam allowance to one side, and then fold it in half with wrong sides together. So we want the nice finished edge on the outside, and we're just going to press this along the length of our neckband. Next, with right sides together, we are going to stitch each of the short ends, and then we are just going to stitch all along the bottom here, and holding that together, okay? So you can see it is open. We're just gonna stitch all along here. So I am just going in here and stitching it together, and this is going to hold our neckband in place until we're ready to attach it. So step two, the cuffs. So with this, we have two cuffs, of course, with right sides together, put them towards the shorter side. So in here, I am just going ahead and putting in just a couple of clips, and then we're going to stitch them in the V. Now I have already stitched them, but you're just going to stretch it straight as you put it through that serger. It's going to be very tough to get that V shape if you're just using the serger. So a top tip is to first stitch it in that V shape, and then you're able to stretch it appropriately. Press it to one side and then with wrong sides together, put them in place and then press it together. And then we're going to stitch all the way around. 
So for this, remove your main base plate off your machine so you can get that little tube in there. And then we are just going to stitch both those raw edges together to hold it in place until we're ready to attach the cuffs. So that neckband and the cuff is very similar to the same. So we've got these two cuffs all ready to go. Now for step three, the body. So with this, I have the back piece here. So that's the one that's cut on the fold. And I am going to line up the shoulder seams with the front and the back with right sides together. So I'm just going to clip that in. I'm going to place the other front piece on also right sides together, and I'm going to stitch then serge. If you don't have an overlocker or a serger, you can skip that step. And it should look just like this with the shoulder seams all coming together. So next that brings us to step number four, the pockets. So this is optional, but I always like to have a car cardigan or a jacket with pockets. Match up those notches on the side as well as the pockets, and you're going to attach all four pocket bags. So make sure that the pocket bag is facing downward when you do stitch it. And I like to finish with the serger. So when you do attach it on the one side, stitch it in place and then take your serger and run along the edge. I like to extend just slightly past. This gives a nice finished edge. Next, we are going to under stitch it. So with the seam allowances pointing towards the pocket bag, press that and then stitch it. So see how they're pointed towards that pocket bag. Now we're going to stitch on the pocket bag that seam allowance in. Now we've got really narrow seam allowances, so you're going to want to stick pretty darn close to that seam line there. And when it's done, it should look just like this, holding it in place. Now for step five, the side seams. So with the side seams, we're going to place right sides together with the front and the back pieces, matching up those pocket bags and the bottom and the top where your sleeve comes out. So once again, just attaching those clips as necessary, and then we're going to stitch it, pivot at that pocket bag, and then serge the ends. So I am going to come in with my regular machine first. It's really important on this with the pocket bags, if you're searching it, to do it on the regular sewing machine first and not just the serger. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. So we've gone through and we've stitched this with our seam allowance. Now, if you're taking it to the serger, you take your scissors and clip at the corner of the top and the bottom of the pocket bag, just like so. This is the secret sauce that will help it lay flat when you're actually overlocking it. So when you get to the overlocker, start as you usually would, but then when you get to that pocket bag, we can't really pivot on a serger, but because we made that notch on the bias, we can then pull that pocket bag and feed it through the overlocker in a straight line. So here is it again, once more, I'm just pulling it straight and you can see you're going to have a chain of stitches there with no fabric. That is fine. It is that pocket ease. And so now we have the side seams all stitched together with cute inseam pockets hidden away on the inside here. So next we want to press that, press the pocket bags towards the front of our jacket. So I'm just arranging that nicely and then I am pressing this with a decent amount of steam to just really set that seam in place. Now that takes us to step six, the neckband. So with the neckband, we are going to place right sides together on the jacket, matching up the notches. So you want that center back on the seam of the neckband. And then there are two notches that on the neckband that match up to the shoulder seams, match those up first. And you may have to stretch one or the other just slightly and then go ahead and distribute the rest. One thing to note is you're not taking the neckband all the way down to the bottom of the jacket because you actually need to have an overhang of the actual jacket or cardigan between that neckband because we need to hem the bottom of that. So we're going to stitch and serge. And I just wanted to show you approximately how much I leave, which is basically the seam allowance that is drawn on your pattern. So I have gone ahead and surged that in place. So you can see the neckband just like so. Coming all the way down, our jacket is almost done. Now we've got step seven, the hem. So the hem, you can do it two ways. 
So first I like to press that seam for the pocket and then I'm going to press under that seam that we had just surged all the way down. You can roll up just the very bottom portion and you'll notice I've surged the bottom of this hem. It just makes it a bit easier. And then do a double fold hem. This is really great for thinner fabric, but because this is a thicker fabric, I am just going to press the entire hem allowance up and then top stitch that in place. So I, on fabrics like this, like to pin or clip as I press just so that it holds its shape nicely in this. So once that is all clipped in place, go ahead and top stitch that. So you can see I have top stitched it just like so. So we have it all nice. Next for step eight is the cuffs. So the cuffs that we had made earlier, we are going to attach them to our jacket. So with right sides together and match that bottom seam of the cuff to the bottom underarm seam on the sleeve. And so we're just going to attach that. And then I had have just quartered them and I actually have to stretch my sleeve just slightly to fit the cuff. And then I'm going to stitch and then serge. And I have finished this side. Don't forget to tie off your tails if you are serging them so it doesn't unravel. Now for step nine, pressing and any of those finishing touches. So I'm going ahead and I'm actually going to press that seam allowance towards the sleeve on the cuff, just to kind of reduce a bit of that bulk in there. I'm also going ahead and pressing the neckline because we haven't pressed that yet. And of course we have our custom label from Minerva that we are going to add. And so I am just stitching that in place. And on the backside, it just looks just like so. And it is all basically done. We have our beautiful cardigan and jacket all stitched up here. And it's time for the reveal. Go, what's the use in holding on? Can we find a way where we could spend some time alone? And there you have it. The B. Charl jacket all stitched up. This one is a great beginner friendly project and you could finish it in half a day. And that includes cutting everything out as well. Now, if you've made this project, don't forget to use the hashtag Minerva makes as well as hashtag be Charles jacket and hashtag style art so that we can find it. Now, if you're not already a member here at Minerva, do be sure to create a free account. It is a wonderful place where you can share all the fantastic creative makes that you have stitched or knit up. And if you're curious to find me here at Minerva, you can find me at Sheer Stitchery and I'll link my profile down below. Until next time, makers.